Like most blockbuster movie franchises, Star Wars is such a massive entertainment goliath that it doesn't really give actors much room for their own agency. As such, it's not terribly surprising that many cast members have expressed their distaste for working on the franchise over the years. Whether as a result of poor working conditions, bad pay, disappointing creative decisions, or the less pleasant quarters of the fanbase. Star Wars itself may be awesome, but that doesn't mean working on it is. With that in mind, I'm Will for What Culture, and here are 10 actors who hated working on Star Wars. 10. Terence Stamp, Supreme Chancellor Valorum. The Star Wars prequels are absolutely packed with terrific actors who are thoroughly wasted on George Lucas's experimental blockbuster trilogy, and few more egregiously so than the brilliant Terence Stamp. He makes a brief cameo appearance in The Phantom Menace as Supreme Chancellor Finis Valorum, who is ultimately booted out of the Senate and replaced with Palpatine. In an interview with Empire Magazine, Stamp did not have many kind words to say about shooting his small role, nor working with George Lucas, saying, we didn't get on at all. I didn't really rate him that much as a director, really. Stamp also claimed the pay was poor, and that when he agreed to come back for a day of unpaid reshoots on the condition he received a gift instead, he ended up getting a set of Star Wars stencils. Nice. 9. Alec Guinness, Obi-Wan Kenobi Alec Guinness may have received a Best Supporting Actor nomination for his iconic performance as Obi-Wan in A New Hope, but Guinness himself wasn't too fond of the role, and by his own admission, only took part for the cold hard cash. Guinness wrote letters to a friend during shooting, where he called the project's fairy tale rubbish and referred to the dialogue as pretty ropey. Though by all accounts, Guinness made for a pretty miserable presence on set and didn't enjoy discussing the role for the rest of his life, he certainly did enjoy the colossal royalties his estate continues to receive said to be in the ballpark of $100 million to date. 8. Hayden Christensen, Anakin Skywalker Hayden Christensen gets plenty of flack from fans for his performance as Anakin Skywalker in the latter two Star Wars prequels, though he was in no way aided by the pretty terrible dialogue. Though Christensen has been relatively diplomatic about the franchise over the years, and even made a subtle voice cameo in The Rise of Skywalker, he also occasionally commented his frustrations with the series. In a 2008 interview, he said, George isn't looking for us to come in and have script meetings with him and talk about characters. It wasn't necessarily anything you could feel good about creatively. 7. Dennis Lawson, Wedge Antilles Dennis Lawson played the small but memorable role of rebel pilot Wedge Antilles in the original Star Wars trilogy, though he didn't much care for the part or the fame he received for it. Before the release of The Force Awakens, rumors intensified that Wedge would be making a return. But in an interview, Lawson curtly retorted, I'm not gonna do that. They asked me, but it just would have bored me. You can't knock the guy's honesty, though in an ironic turnaround, he did end up making a cameo appearance in The Rise of Skywalker. 6. Jake Lloyd, Young Anakin Skywalker Chief among the actors who suffered most at the hands of the Star Wars fanbase was Jake Lloyd, who at the age of eight played young Anakin Skywalker in The Phantom Menace, and became a lightning rod for everything fans hated about the film. In the years since the film's release, Lloyd has opened up about the fact that he was bullied in school for the part in the franchise, which, in addition to the film's hectic shoot and press tour, where he'd do up to 60 interviews a day, led him to deeming his school years a living hell. By 2001, Lloyd decided to quit the acting business altogether, and in recent years, Lloyd has had several run-ins with the law as well as mental health issues, leading to a diagnosis of paranoid schizophrenia in early 2020. It's a sad outcome for a young actor who was far from the reason The Phantom Menace was disappointing. 5. Harrison Ford, Han Solo it's become painfully clear over the years that Harrison Ford simply doesn't care about Han Solo. Ford even lobbied Lucas to kill off Han in Return of the Jedi, but alas, he couldn't be swayed. Ford generally shied away from talking about Star Wars for much of the next 30 years, until he finally returned to the franchise in The Force Awakens. An estimated $15 million salary for a relatively small supporting role probably didn't hurt his decision to come back, in all fairness. Despite dying in that film, it didn't stop Ford popping back in for a cameo in The Rise of Skywalker. Ford may not care about Han, but like anyone else, who is he to turn down an easy, enormous payday? 4. Ahmed Best, Jar Jar Binks 
Much like Jake Lloyd, Jar Jar Binks performer Ahmed Best became an actor upon which fans could hang their misgivings with The Phantom Menace, and similarly suffered immensely as a result. Due to the overwhelming criticism of Jar Jar as a character, Best stated that he felt his career was over. He later admitted that he even considered committing suicide as a result of the intense backlash to both the character and his performance. Of course, like Jake Lloyd, Best wasn't remotely to blame, and simply performing a part which was ill-conceived by the creatives from the ground up. 3. David Prowse – Darth Vader Though Darth Vader's unforgettable voice was recorded by the inimitable James Earl Jones, the physical in-suit performance was carried out by former bodybuilder David Prowse. Despite bringing an unmistakable physicality to the part, Prowse has had a complicated relationship with the franchise, largely due to his fraught dealings with Lucas. The animosity allegedly stems from Prowse leaking the Empire Strikes Back big parentage twist, which many claim caused Lucas to cast Sebastian Shaw in the role of the scarred, dying Anakin at the end of Return of the Jedi. Prowse also ended up banned from Star Wars conventions in 2010, which he believes was due to him taking part in the Lucas Critical 2010 documentary, The People vs. George Lucas. 2. John Boyega – Finn like Daisy Ridley, John Boyega was given the opportunity of a lifetime when he was cast as Finn in the Star Wars sequel trilogy, and though The Force Awakens gave his character a solid introduction, both Boyega and fans became increasingly dissatisfied with his marginalised role in the two sequels. As diplomatic as most actors tend to be about franchises which they could potentially return to, Boyega was quick to deem himself done with Star Wars following the release of The Rise of Skywalker. In a recent interview, Boyega held nothing back as he broke down his issues with the way Finn was depicted, saying, You get yourself involved in projects, and you're not necessarily going to like everything, but what I would say to Disney is to not bring out a black character, market them to be much more important in the franchise than they are, and then have them pushed to the side. It's not good. I'll say it straight up. 1. Peter Serafinowicz, Voice of Darth Maul Peter Serafinowicz provided the voice of Darth Maul in The Phantom Menace, for all three of the lines that actually made it into the movie. Despite his deliciously ominous delivery of those three lines, Serafinowicz hasn't had much nice to say about working on the film or his limited interactions with George Lucas. Serafinowicz said that Lucas told him to make Maul sound simply evil, and when it came time for the film's premiere, he wasn't even invited, ultimately having to spend $1,000 of his own money to buy a ticket. Also, Serafinowicz did recall Maul's lines for his cameo appearance in Solo A Star Wars Story, only to be told at the last minute that his work had been re-recorded by Sam Witwer, who had voiced the character for years on the animated series The Clone Wars and Rebels. Ouch. YouTube. The Unexpected Frontier. These are the videos of WhatCulture.com. It's continuing mission to list strange new facts, seek out news and offbeat discoveries, to boldly go where no What Culture channel has gone before. How would you guys like to start a Star Trek channel? Hell yeah! No, sorry, how's he got a uniform? I've been asking for one Who for months is now. Who is Captain Birdie? Hell yeah! Is he even nah, not Hell yeah! Literally months I've been asking for one. Hell yeah! Hell yeah! Hell yeah! Hell yeah! Hi. I'm Marcus, Marcus Bronzy, new presenter for Trek Culture. What culture's new home for all things Star Trek related. Now we've already got a bunch of great content like Adam Cleary's ups and downs for every new episode of Picard. And we'll of course have all of the lists and rankings that you know and love us for. Fancy yourself a Trekkie and want to contribute? Well, What Culture is hiring video editors and writers. So if you want to get involved, fire over a CV and cover letter to trekculture at whatculture.com. And while you're at it, don't forget to slap subscribe and give us a follow on Twitter. It would be a great dishonor if you didn't. I've been Captain Marcus Bronzy. Until next time, 